Saunas are pretty hot these days. This practice has seen a pretty significant surge in popularity recently, especially with all the biohackers and the longevity people on social media. Many people are constructing their own saunas, purchasing their own personal units, or just making regular use of the facilities at health clubs. And I'm an advocate for holistic health approaches, even though I hate the word holistic for some reason, I still think saunas and their variations can be pretty accessible for most people. So for some people it is building a $10,000 backyard sauna, but even if your options are limited to just wrapping a heated blanket around your legs after a long day, I still think sauna could be something that everyone uses. So as we delve deeper into this topic, you'll gain a deeper comprehensive understanding of how saunas work, why they could be beneficial for your health and longevity, and also how to use them. How do saunas work? Let's begin by examining the concept of heat as medicine, and more specifically, sauna as a therapeutic tool. So it's worth noting that in many contexts, you can substitute sauna with other forms of heat therapy, like an infrared blanket, infrared sauna, and even a hot tub, although that may not be the most sanitary, your mileage may vary, but the key is consistent exposure to therapeutic heat, usually above 120 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 50 to 70 degrees Celsius, something like that. Basically when your body's exposed to heat, it's gonna initiate a natural mechanism to divert heat away from the core of the body to the periphery. This process is gonna increase blood flow to the peripheral areas of your body, like your skin and your extremities, and away from your heart and internal organs. This response in the body is pretty fascinating because it directs a significant amount of blood flow to your muscles, which is a phenomenon that doesn't typically occur in people who don't exercise regularly. So basically you're mimicking the blood flow of exercise without even having to exercise. This response in the body is gonna trigger the production of nitric oxide, which is gonna open up your blood vessels, and as I'll talk about a little bit more shortly, basically very good for blood pressure. So basically the smooth muscles in your circulatory system are gonna get a workout with using a sauna. So a lot of people miss out on this beneficial process if they don't engage in regular exercise, which is why I think people who don't exercise should definitely consider sauna as a way to give their cardiovascular system a bit of a workout. And if you are exercising, definitely do both for double the benefit. Another intriguing aspect of heat therapy for me that I found in my research is something called the hunting response, which comes into play when you use something called contrast therapy. So basically how this works, so when you're hot and your blood vessels are dilated from sauna use and then you suddenly expose yourself to cold like a cold shower a cold plunge ocean lake even just outside when it's cold outside your blood vessels are going to rapidly constrict and then blood is going to be sent back to the core of your body and this is going to be a one-time occurrence it's going to happen cyclically over the period of about 90 minutes and basically this combination of heat and cold thermogenesis is going to be very good for people with circulatory problems like peripheral edema peripheral vascular disease poor blood circulation, cellulite, varicose veins. So this could be a promising therapy for that. So I thought that was a very interesting thing that I found. Basically this just alternating hot and cold is gonna return stagnant fluids to circulation and may help reduce inflammation in the long run. So definitely try it out. I think it's pretty cool, even from like a recovery standpoint in your workouts. So let's have a deeper look at the data. So there was a systematic review of the clinical effects of regular dry sauna, and that gave us a little bit more insight into the mechanisms of action, and it goes beyond vasodilation. So a lot of it has to do with your heart. So sauna bathing increases cardiac output, which is basically how much blood your heart can pump through the body, reduces peripheral vascular resistance, which is a marker for blood pressure, and induces other physiological changes in just cardiovascular parameters. You know, a bunch of big science words. These can include decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate variability, which is a measure of stress, Obviously higher heart rate variability is gonna be an indicator of lower stress. It's gonna improve cardiac function markers and enhance blood flow mediated arterial and vascular dilation. So basically your blood vessels can dilate better. There's also gonna be a hormonal and metabolic effect that comes from regular use of sauna. Sauna is gonna reduce levels of epinephrine and norepinephrine or adrenaline, which are markers of the body's stress response. It's gonna increase levels of nitric oxide metabolites, as I mentioned, which play a crucial role in blood vessel dilation and vascular health. And then also on top of that, regular sauna use has been associated with decreases in total and LDL cholesterol levels, which is obviously something you want if you want to live a very long life. There's gonna be some improvements in growth hormone levels, which isn't gonna be super significant for gains, but could be helpful from a recovery standpoint, and also some decreases in fasting glucose as well. I think these metabolic effects could have pretty far-reaching implications for overall health. So let's talk about some of the data and the benefits. And the benefits come as a result of these physiological changes that I mentioned. So I'm a man of facts, let's get right into the facts. So long-term prospective studies following large cohorts of individuals have yielded pretty compelling results overall. So these studies have demonstrated that the frequency and duration of sauna therapy strongly correlate with reductions in all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and sudden cardiac death. Basically, explain like your five, heat equals less risk of dying. Very simple. And even to put this into perspective, heart disease claimed a staggering close to 700,000 lives in 2020 alone, and it is one of the leading causes of death in the US and worldwide. So if literally just sitting in a hot ass room lowers this risk, you better believe I'm doing that. And as I mentioned, there's lots of benefits on the heart. So there are various scientific methods to measure these effects. 
There are some funny, fancy, sciencey tests called flow-mediated dilation tests and arterial stiffness measurements. But really the key benefit here is improved endothelial health. So there's something called endothelium in your body composed of small cells that line your blood vessels that basically become dysfunctional over time because of things like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. This state is gonna be called endothelial dysfunction. It's gonna be a precursor to further heart complications. For example, erectile dysfunction is one of them. Of course, stroke and heart attacks, two of which will kill you. You know, maybe some people are dying of erectile dysfunction. Hopefully not though, but still things that you don't want. So basically by exposing yourself to the heat in the sauna, you're essentially exercising your endothelium, the functional unit of the cardiovascular system. This process is also going to do something called angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels, and it's primarily going to happen in places like your skeletal muscle is going to be the main one. So as blood is going to be directed to your skeletal muscles during heat exposure, they're gonna respond by creating new blood vessels. And the angiogenesis could be beneficial for muscle tissue because it's gonna improve microvascular circulation throughout the body, could help you with recovery from your workouts as well. Another thing that I did wanna to touch on as well is fluid flow. So while this one's a little bit more speculative, I think that there's still some improvement in lymphatic return as well during sauna use. So there's something in your body called the lymphatic system, which is very important for your immune function and fluid balance. And this could benefit from increased blood flow and temperature changes experienced during sauna therapy. There's actually a trend going around now and over the last few years where some people do a lymphatic massage on their face basically it kind of flushes some of the fluid away from your face to reduce swelling and bloating so this is kind of something that sauna can mimic by kind of circulating some of that lymphatic fluid without having to massage your face of course now for the immune system so the immune system is also something that's going to reap pretty significant benefits from heat exposure so heat activates special proteins in your body called heat shock proteins which along with short-term increases in certain signaling molecules called interleukins which are important for your immune system it's going to favorably affect your immune system in various signaling pathways within the body. So these changes in your body as a result from heat are also gonna help with oxidative stress, reduce that by increasing your body's natural antioxidant response. So instead of avoiding seed oils, just go in a sauna. Just kidding, that's a topic for another video. So with heat exposure, there's gonna be various types of immune system cells that are gonna be activated or increased. One of them is our neutrophils, which are the first responders to infection. There are monocytes and macrophages, which engulf and destroy pathogens. There's T lymphocytes, which play a role in cell mediated immunity. So basically, long story short, heat exposure increases white blood cells and their function so you can fight infection better. Pretty simple, don't get too caught up on the big Word. And of course, given the current global focus on immune health, you know, whether you think it's a conspiracy or not, still think sauna therapy could be considered a viable solution and an adjunctive lifestyle treatment just to boost the overall immune function. So could be helpful there. Now, as a neuroscience major, I think the functions on the brain are the most interesting. So regular sauna use can actually significantly reduce the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. I think it's like 65 to 66% reduction in the risk overall in regular sauna users. And there's been lots of studies on people who use saunas in Finland. I think they did a cohort study where they followed them for 26 years, found these people had significant reductions in the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. So heat, good for brain. So basically these findings suggest that sauna could play a big role in maintaining cognitive health as we age. And personally, I've noticed some improvements in my memory function after sauna sessions, and this could be because of the improved circulation, or maybe I'm getting some angiogenesis in my brain you know, getting some nutrients up there just from the enhanced blood flow, getting more oxygen, nutrient delivery, all plausible solutions and things happening here. Research has also observed changes in levels of brain-derived natriuretic peptide, basically called BNP, during sauna use. This peptide has evolved in osmotic regulation in the bud, and high levels are linked to elevated blood pressure. So sauna lowers it, so lower blood pressure, another benefit there. And really interestingly, one of the main benefits of sauna use is its ability to reduce high blood pressure. Lots of data on this one. Several studies involving people with elevated blood pressure wearing 24 hour monitors showed an almost immediate reduction in blood pressure following sauna use. So it seems like sauna is good for the cardiovascular system, basically. Now for the bones, let's talk a little bit more about the fascinating effects on bone health. When you expose your body to heat, more blood is gonna be directed to your bones. And in response to this increased blood flow, your bones are gonna release stem cells. This process improves red bone marrow production, enhances overall bone marrow circulation. And I think this one's pretty cool because outside of any like weight bearing exercise, like strength training, there really aren't many activities that stimulate increased circulation in the bones. So this could be one thing that's helpful. I think this could be very helpful for elderly people if they have implications with maintaining bone density, potentially in the treatment and prevention of conditions like osteoporosis. So it could be worthwhile trying. And then of course, I did wanna talk about glucose regulation as well. So there are several studies focusing on diabetic patients that have shown improved glucose clearance in the legs after simply just warming them up. Weird, right? This is particularly significant because you know that sedentary behavior can induce insulin resistance in leg muscles. So the improved glucose uptake observed with heat therapy 
could potentially complement other treatments for type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome altogether. So things are very helpful there. Now, one thing is a little bit of a bonus that I want to talk about a bit is summer heat training. So given that I'm making this video in the summer, you might be wondering why you should expose yourself to more heat in the summer. And I think that this could be worthwhile to talk about just because you have a little bit more of like an adaptation in response to your training. So by incorporating strategic heat exposure to your routine, you can increase your blood plasma volume, improving your body's ability to cool itself, while maintaining oxygen delivery to the muscles. So basically you're getting more oxygen and also cooling down a little bit just by training in a little bit more heat. This could benefit your performance even in cooler conditions and it does last for a while. Kind of like sprinting with a parachute. It might slow you down a little bit, but you will adapt and run faster in the long run. If you do want to apply this, here are some strategies for how you can do it. So the most effective method is just doing a hot run, running for you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes at a pretty easy to moderate pace in hot conditions. Aim for maybe eight to 14 sessions over the course of several weeks. And if outdoor conditions aren't warm enough, you could use a treadmill in a heated room or you know, be like a boxer trying to lose weight for a fight or extra layers just to simulate some heat stress. You could also do post-run sauna sessions that could boost plasma volume and endurance as well. Start with like five to 10 minutes at maybe 170, 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and just gradually increase the duration and temperature. Even just four 30 minute sessions at 180 degrees can increase plasma volume overall and improve your performance. If time's limited, even three to seven heat adaptation runs can produce a worthwhile 3.5% increase in plasma volume, offering pretty noticeable improvements. But if you do wanna do heat training, be mindful. You will have to hydrate, drink according to your thirst. Mild dehydration can actually trigger plasma expansion, the opposite of what you want. Aim to lose no more than 2% of your body weight. Rehydrate immediately after your session. Drink, you know, a plenty of water. Not too much though, that's not good either. Maybe have some electrolytes like salt and I think you'll be golden. And with these, you just wanna gradually increase it all in your routine. Start with one or two sessions a week. Increase as your body adapts and then continue your regular cooler workouts as well just to maintain overall speed and intensity. But I think most people watching this lift, so if you're not running or doing those things, you know, maybe don't worry about it, but I thought it was worthwhile adding. Now, how do you actually use a sauna? So when it comes to frequency and duration of sauna use, I think the general guideline is just to stay in as long as you're comfortable. Crucial to listen to your body here, consider your overall stress levels. So sauna therapy, while beneficial, is a physiological stressor. Same way exercise is a stressor, but it's something that's good stress that you can grow from. But having said that, if you're already psychologically or mentally stressed, or you've had a particularly intense workout or poor sleep, you may wanna take it easy on the sauna or even skip a session. But on the flip side, if there are days when you're feeling super energetic and well rested, you may wanna to choose to do multiple rounds at higher temperatures. You know, gotta have that balance. The key here is just to use your intuition, adjust based on how you're feeling, and remember the goal is to reap the health benefits without overstraining your body. The general rule of thumb for sauna use is around two to five sessions per week for 10 to 40 minutes at a time. Obviously start lower, build up your tolerance, don't go in for five sessions, you know, 40 minutes a week, that's not gonna be good for you. As for type of sauna, whether it's an infrared sauna, classic finished sauna, you know, the best one you can use is one that you can afford and can actually use consistently. If you don't have the time or the inclination to build a fire for a traditional finished sauna, or you don't have access to an infrared sauna where you could just push it on with the button, maybe you could just use the one in the gym. You know, very simple, just find something that works for you, get hot, get warm, sweat it out a little bit, you'll be fine. And another thing with saunas in the gym, you know, granted there may be some old naked guys in there, just kidding, hopefully there's not, but for real, you could make some pretty good friends in there, make some connections, talk to some pretty interesting people. Always a good way to network with people in the gym. And there are some differences between infrared and traditional saunas that I still think are worth noting. So infrared saunas actually provide a dry heat that penetrates a little bit deeper into the body, while traditional saunas offer more of a wet heat, kind of like humidity, when water is poured over rocks, creating steam. Both have pretty similar benefits, and infrared saunas have been the subject of a lot of research, particularly in the realm of cardiovascular health. But I don't think you should worry about it too much. You know, just get warm, get exposed, you know, don't worry worry about the $5,000 machine versus the $10,000 one. You could still even get benefits from using like a sauna blanket or other portable heat therapy devices, or even just going in your shower, cranking it on real hot and just sitting in there. That'll still be beneficial for you. The key here is just to find a method that works that you'll use regularly. Consistency is crucial with anything health and fitness related. So just make sure you stay on top of these things. But if you are seeking a convenient at home sauna therapy, I use something called the sauna box, which is a portable option that I personally use. It offers the benefits of sauna sessions without requiring permanent installation or significant space. It's something that I could just fold up, put into a small pouch and travel with it if I want. And it's been a game changer for consistency. I think it's portability allows for flexible use at home. 
I put it in the basement if I want, I put it in the garage if I want, and if I don't want my basement to be humid. But even then, it still insulates it, keeps things all nice and compact, and allows me to use a sauna at home without having to go to the gym. It gets pretty hot. It's one of those ones that provides that wet heat. It's not gonna be as good as like the 190 degree, you know, $10,000 one, but I think it's a lot more affordable, easily accessible. Still gonna give you a lot of the, you know, heat exposure, therapy, and relaxation that you would want from a sauna. So if you do wanna check out SaunaBox, make sure you use my code PULOS10 if you'd like to purchase it for a little bit of a discount been very beneficial for my life, so definitely check it out. So just to summarize a little bit, the science behind sauna use and heat therapy, very compelling, simple as that. There's gonna be benefits to your microvascular system, blood composition, heart function, bone health, and beyond. These things are all extensive and well-documented. So whether you're looking just to improve your heart health, boost your immune system, live a little bit longer, you know, maintain your own cognitive function, or simply just chill, relax, you know, relax your muscles a little bit, I think a sauna will be very helpful for you. So make sure you include it in your routine. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned, I'll be posting some more or maybe on cold exposure soon. If there's anything else health, fitness, and longevity related you'd like to see, make sure you leave a comment below and I'll take your suggestion to heart and, and sit and ponder of it for many, many hours. But for real, you know, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like it and subscribe and I'll check you in the next one. Peace out.